Greetings class, welcome to INT1116 Network Concepts. Uh, my name is Professor Daniel Schmeling, and I'll be instructing the class. What I wanted to do is go over lesson one a bit um, and get you familiar with the course and how it's set up. Um, the first thing I want to talk to you about is the instructor announcements. So in your class in the instructor amounts, announcements, if you click on them, um, each week I do a, a lesson outline. In this outline, it, pertain, it has a lot of information that um, is very good, um, has a lot of resources for that particular lesson. It tells you the due dates. So be sure you click on that and take a look at some of the things in that. Um, it helps you with some of the concepts within there. Um, so that's important to do to start off each week by hitting that uh, lesson one concept. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to go to lesson one. Inside of lesson one, there are some PowerPoint slides too, um, some additional resources. A lot of those are the same things that we are hitting up. Um, but I wanted to talk to you about the lesson one discussion questions. Um, and the discussion question this week talks about some advantage advantages and disadvantages to network topologies and some factors that you should you should choose or consider um, when you're implementing a network topology so first let's talk about that definition network topology right so if you scroll down I've started the the discussion um, with some information on that but basically the concept of a topology is how these items work as a whole right how the physical part or the logical part works together. Um, generally, it's a topology is done by a diagram so that one can understand how the, the, network, um, the network devices are connecting and how it's implemented to show you. Um, it, within this discussion, there are several different topologies that we talk about. Um, one is the peer-to-peer -peer model. Um, in the peer-to-peer -peer model, basically what happens is a computer connects to another um, computer, um, so peer-to-peer, -peer, and then uses that resource of that computer. Um, for example, if you are a, uh, connecting to a shared printer from another computer, um, you would connect to that other computer first, and then the printer, and then use that device. Um, a client to server network model is very similar. The server has all the shared devices that you need to access, for example, a file share. So that computer will connect to that server and get the item that it needs to get um, and then go back. Uh, the data goes back. Um, in that peer-to-peer, -peer, um, just pretend that this server is not there and this computer would connect to this computer, so one peer to another peer, to use that printer and print out items. Or, in reverse, this computer connects to this computer to scan a document, and then that document's scanned. And then this computer can access that scanned document. You'll know a lot about peer-to-peer -peer from like sharing sites that you, know, that you shouldn't use. For example, uh, Casa um, used to be like, this computer would download music, this computer would be able to access that download music and then download that music so that they can use that music. That's typical of the peer-to-peer -to -peer, um, type topology. And you can see that each one of these has a diagram. Um, going down a little bit further, um, we're going to talk about some, some LAN technology. So local area network, a LAN topology. So the important thing to know in the LAN topology is Everything is local and inside, connecting inside. So this computer is not going outside to the internet, right? Well, the internet's out here. It's staying within its own local area and connecting to the devices inside of this area, right? Uh, it's all connected through a switch. The switch is usually a layer two switch, meaning it just stays here. It does not route traffic. Um, so if I want to get to that printer, the switch knows the MAC address of that printer and sends the traffic to that direction, but it does not route it to an outside or another switch. Um, the switch generally has a default gateway, so if the device wasn't on the switch, it would go through the, devol the, the default gateway to the next, the next switch or the next hop and figure out that the device 
it may may be on that next printer or correction switch or the next switch so the basic concept is the LAN keeps things local um, it'll go through the switch and to the device that it needs to get to so let's say this computer needs to get to this printer or this server it goes to the switch the, the traffic the data traffic goes across this Ethernet cable to this switch the switch says your printer is on this port the traffic then goes through this computer to this printer um, so that's a local area topology a local area network here are some devices within the local area network you could have different types of switching um, and generally you could have stacks of switch what people attempt to do is create some redundancy so instead of having one switch they'll have a stack of switches so if this switch goes down this switch takes over the traffic then goes through that second switch um, I'll show you that in a little bit here and these are just some devices right a port is actually the port uh, the, the the place you could physically plug in a network cable that's a network port and you can see all these network ports here so some more LAN, right? Uh, instead of having just one switch, you may have different switches. And again, these different switches can be stacked so that if one of the switch goes down, the other switch takes over. But let's say you need this computer needs to get to this computer here for some, some type of you know transmission. Uh, what it'll do is the, the data will travel across this cable. The switch will say the device is not on this switch. You need to go to the next switch. It goes to the next switch. Again, it'll say the device is not on this one. You need to go to the next switch. It goes to the next switch and finds the device and goes to that device. The, the, the LAN here, local area network, does not go to the internet, right? So your traffic is staying within this local area, but not to Google or AOL or um, MSN. It stays local. That's what a local area network does, right? In this a bus topology. Um, the way I see it is like pretend that the bus driver is here in the front and this is the back of the bus. Items travel um, only in one line, right? And just pretend that these are seats on the bus. So data may travel along this line to the next device, to the next device, to the next device. You can see that a disadvantage is if there's a, a sever or a cut in this line, then the whole, the whole site is down. Um, in a ring topology, Traffic may go either clockwise or counterclockwise in one direction. Um, but again, if there's a sever in this, right, the whole site's down. So, so that's a disadvantage when enabling that. Um, this is kind of like a star bus topology. So here's your bus, right? Here's the star where things are connecting to a switch, right? So each of one of these switch has a star topology and then a bus topology along this line, right? But when you get to a switch, it's a star. Um, again, the star topology just connects back to a local switch and then goes out, right? So if the switch goes down, um, you know, that, that star area would be down, but you can place redundancy in that switch. Again, here's a ring topology um, where the, the the traffic is either clockwise or counterclockwise. Um, um, a WAN or a MAN, um, you have a metropolitan area network or a wide area network, uh, is basically like a LAN, however, it goes through a router to another area, right? So consider this LAN, local area network A, local area network B, and they're adjoined, right? And they're connected by a router. So if this device needs to get to this device, it sends the traffic to the switch, to the switch, to the router. A router is just something that directs traffic. It says there's nothing on this LAN with that MAC address or IP address that you need. It sends it across the wide area network to another router. That router says, yes, that traffic is down here on switch B, and it goes along the, the cable to switch B and finds that device. So WAN is two LANs, same thing as a MAN, it's two LANs adjoined by two routers. To get items off of your LAN, you have to have a, a router, which is otherwise known as a layer three device. Finally, 
I want to talk about the OSI model. Um, the OSI model is basically how the traffic goes from your computer to another computer and it's readable, right? If you just send traffic and it doesn't go through this OSI model, that traffic is not readable. Um, it, so it takes the, 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 the data and it goes through layers and it encrypts it and adds headers and footers to send it along to where it needs to go. Um, it does not always go through all layers, right? You could, and it, you know, it tells you what some of the applications are. So email, if you send an email, it's at layer seven, the application layer. And when it goes, you know, when it goes from this computer to this computer, it goes through these, it adds headers and footers. It basically encapsulates the package, right? So it makes it transportable and it makes it readable. So once it gets to this device it goes through those layers maybe from the physical side back up to application side and that data is then readable a a uh, phrase to remember this is all people seem to need data processing right that's a way that people remember this osi model um, but basically that's all it's for it's to read data make it readable from one thing to another um, so that's basically the end of the the uh, the lesson that I wanted to talk about. I am going to create a quick other lesson on how to do the project. Thanks.